Good night, everybody. Uh, tonight we are going to read out of the book of First Samuel, uh, chapter 18, and we're going to read the whole thing to really have the idea about David and Galaya. So, and it got to pass when he had made an end speaking into Saul, the Saul and Jonathan was meet with the soul of David. Uh, let's see. Yes, please. Um, uh, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Keep, keep going. There's stop. Um... Um, that was on three. Hold on one second. No. I got it wrong. Is chapter 17 instead of 18? Oh. I got it wrong. Sorry. It's for Samuel. Yeah, chapter 17. Can you pass the yeah. chapter 17? Mm-hmm. Um, so chapter 17, verse 1? Yes. Okay. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at um, Shochop, I'm going to say all these names wrong, I'm sorry you guys, <laughs> which belonged to Judah and Pitch between Sho, Shochok and Azika, Az, Azika and Ephedamim. Mm-hmm. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the other side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the champ of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a or and he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mill. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had grievous, uh, and he had grievous of brass <laughs> upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a <coughs> weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and ye servants of Saul? Choose your man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, when will be your, um, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then ye be our servants and serve us. 
And the, Phil and the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, Steve, uh, Philistine they, were, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of, Eph, uh, uh, of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three oldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to battle, and the names of his three sons that went to battle were um, Elab, the firstborn, and next to him Ab Abadab, and the third Shem Shemaah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you guys. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounding it out. <laughs> and David was. <laughs> I'm trying my best. I need to get my Bible out. Um, and David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. And Jesse said to David, his son, take now for thine brethren of Ephah of this perched corn and these 10 loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now, uh, now Saul and they, and all the men of Israel, were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. Let me talk oh, about sorry. it. Okay. So, so each the Palestine and the Israelites, they were in each, you know, each mountain. And how mm -hmm. David, he was the youngest of of uh, eight brothers, and um, so many times. He 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 was looked down because he was skinny. He wasn't, you know, in the armies and and so many times in our lives that happens. The people look down people because they think that they're not uh, like um, used in mighty ways. But in in those small beginnings is where God really used people in mighty ways. What I love about David is that he had an encounter with God. It was what it made him special. That's why he got anointed to become a king. Because the intimacy that he had with God. He, he was anointed and he was guided. Thank you, Pastor. And he was guided by um, by God. And and what I what I see in the scripture is that that sometimes we get intimidated because we think that we are not ready for the battle. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if God yeah. called you for the battle, mm -hmm. it's because He placed the spirit of mm. David, the, the spirit of that man, humble man, is what I love about David. He was so humble. He spent hours and hours worshiping God and making the Psalms. Yeah. The book of Psalms is, the, is poetry. Yeah. It's prayers. Yeah. But they came from his heart. Mm -hmm. What I love about David King David, that he fought, he was, he sent. He killed someone. He took the wife of someone and had a child with him. 
with her. But what God signed him is what we are gonna about to read. That spirit, that humbleness. There's so many people and right now, David was trained in the valley with the ships. He was personally trained by God to become a king, yeah. to take care. He was taking care of the sheep, mm -hmm. but later on will right. be people, a right. nation, right. under his, his, his care. Can yeah. you please continue reading, please?
a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said to Saul, Thine servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Can you stop just one second? Here God interviewed for him. He, he, God, he was so, he had so much faith in God, and he knew that God will come through. Mm -hmm. And it's not by his ability, but it was by faith. Yeah. What I love mm -hmm. about King David, he was a man of faith. He was a real man. He, 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 he was so in love with God that he was so, he couldn't, he was so disturbed because the, the men of the army, when this Palestine was mocking God and his people, nobody did nothing. And he was so angry, so wretchedly angry, and he's like, I'm gonna go, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and it's funny because in that moment, people was looking down to him. Like, he's, he's so young, he's, I, I imagine him skinny. And uh, so people, but they didn't have any other choice. Nobody else was, you know, have that nerve to come and fight that giant. And sometimes we face giants in our lives, right, right, many right, times. Right, right. But when we have an encounter with God, Hallelujah. it's what it makes the difference. Right, right. God killed that lion that is in front of you, that bear that is in front of you, whatever is going on, it can be a sickness, mm -hmm. you know, financial situation, but when we really put the shield of faith like David did. Mm -hmm. He didn't wear what uh, King David, you know, you know, armament, but he had the faith in right. him. Right. Yeah. He knew God mm -hmm. so personally mm -hmm. that, that he, could, he couldn't doubt it. He, he knew that this giant, it was way more powerful than he did. But he saw God killing that bear and that lion. And so many of us, we saw God killing giants in our lives. Killing lions and bears. And this is the time that God is calling us. Not, not looking to your physical appearance, but your spiritual appearance. If you spend time with God, you're strong enough right. to kill that giant in front of you, right. whatever it is. Right now, God is preparing his people mm -hmm. for the big battle mm -hmm. this coming. Right. And it's, it's brutal. Yeah. So that's why right now, it, when God was showing me this in the scripture, King David, he didn't have like this big sword or anything, mm -hmm. but he had faith. Right. Could you please keep reading please for me? Yes. Okay. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as <coughs> one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. 
And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail, and David girded his sword upon his armor, and he um, and and he decided to go. Okay, <laughs> for he had not proven it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with thee, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. Oh, yeah. And, and he took his, he, he was too small for the armor, is what happened. And, <laughs> and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a, even in a script. And, he, and his sling was in his hands, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near to David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and ruddy and of fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, I am a dog that thou comest to me with staves. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give them flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David Said to the, or, then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come from thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, oh, the God of armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. <coughs> this day will the Lord deliver thee into me, or into my hands, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all, and all assembled shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you, or, and he will give you into your hands, and it will come to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to David that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and fell upon his and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him but there was no sword in the hand of David. Any more? No. So David knew the battle wasn't his. He knew the battle was God's. And 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 something the that I see in the scripture, the David knew God so good that at the same time he knew who he was in God. And especially when we are out in the battle so important to know who we are in the army of Christ and who's fighting our battles and we already won. The kiss of death is already in Christ's hands. So th this is, and this scripture totally shows how brave is David. How he, he he could say, he could wear the king's 
um, gone, but he did it. He knew he was who he was, and he was comfortable with himself because he was the how God showed Himself to David is what it really it made the difference in how David was so angry that the love of his life, God, was mocking for this Palestine. And even though the Palestine was cursing him with his gods, the, the God of Israel was more powerful than his gods. And so many times, especially in this time that we are living in right now, people who doesn't know God mock God. And God right now, he's gonna cut off so many heads and so many things are coming. But right here in the scripture, give us, give us the comfort that is not our battle, it's God's battle. The only, the only thing we have to do is take the rock and put the shield of faith. That's all we have to do. And we already know what happened to Goliath. So when we really walk by faith, and um, it's in your sheets. And Hebrews 11, cha um, chapter 11, verse one. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's the faith that David had. He didn't see Galatia dead yet, but he knew that, that he will, that God will do it. And it says in uh, chapter 11, verse six says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he had committed to God, must believe that he is, and that he is a reward, then the, the diligently seek him. So seek God with all your heart. And it's what it really, really, um, please God. That's why David got favor because his faith. And 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 the king promised money and his daughter and so many things. But the big favor that he had is because he was anointing already. And sometimes. We, when, not sometimes, all the time when God called us to do something, he already anointing us. He already called us. He already gave us everything. He already fight the battle. The only thing we have to be in the moment, in that place, to show up, that's all. Because the battle is already won. And, and the faith is, and the scripture says that faith comes from, by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's what it really it was, is so strong in David's heart. The word of God. And it's, he spent hours and hours in love with God, spending time with him, right. singing psalms to God. Right. And when it was the due time, God exalted him above all the army of Israel. 
he he was so special to God because God saw how, how his uh, his dad and his brothers put him down, make fun of him because to their eyes he was so little, but to God's eyes. He was a king. He was a being. Right. Because spiritually, he was so strong, right. so brave. He knew God. It's what it really gave him the victory. God did. Yeah. Yeah. Not a stone, not nothing, but the faith that he had in God. Because yeah. already delivered him from the lion and the bear. Uh -huh. And and it was an encounter that he had with God. He saw God move. So he didn't, he, he was so c confident in God that he knew that God would come to him. And, um, and sometimes especially in this time that we are going through so much things that, that this time is so dark God wants us to rise up and not really see us how everyone see us but how God see us God plays something special to all of us especially for this time this time is biblical. Everyone, all of us, we are praying for a miracle move of God, for revival. But we are part of God's army. This is the time that we are going to rise up in faith. Not by words, in faith. And really, it's the time that God is going to show up. It's going to cut off the, the lion's hair, the bear hair, and the galaga. And it's, and it's time for us to rejoice. Yeah. It's time that we are going to see a move of God that we never see before. Mm -hmm. And Psalm 47, can you please read it, sister? The whole, the whole Psalm is only uh, nine. Um, please. Um, yeah, no, I know. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God voice of triumph. For the Lord most high is, is terrible. Mm -hmm. He is a great king over all the earth. He oh. shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. Selah. God is gone up with a shout, the Lord, with the sound of the trumpet, singing praises to God, singing praises, singing praises unto our King, singing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the earth, God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness, Princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Amen. Yeah. It's what called, God called us to do. Just sing praises to God. Yeah. And, and, and he will show up. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's time for us. It, it really shape is shaping our faith this time. And really for us to be ready and regardless of the situation, 
just rejoice in the Lord, just sing praises to Him. He's holy, holy, holy. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we are, we are going to inherit those blessings in this time. And really receive it in your heart. No matter what, what I love about David, that he sinned, he repented. But he didn't lose his place. Sometimes we, including myself, sometimes I'm being disobedient, and when I repent, God used me. God teach me something in that moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the time of repentance. Right. Come back to the Lord. Right. This is the time of be fulfilled with the Holy Spirit. Is our shield. It's the time of fight, the good fight, the fight of faith. Is 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 what right now God wants us to remember. Remember him at the cross, what he has done. He overcome the world. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's time for really rise up and spread the gospel. What God has done in your life. Like David, he knew what God has done in his life is what it brings him to Galaya and kill Galaya and really overcome. Mm -hmm. I bet he was scared. Yeah. You know? But he knew God, right. and he didn't back up. And it's the same thing right now for us not to back up, right. to move forward, right. forward, mm -hmm. yeah. and face it. Right. And really have that relationship with God, praising him, worshiping him. Right. This is the time. And we are going to see so many breakthroughs because it's not our battle. Right. It's God's battle. Right. And he already overcome the war. Right. So this is the message. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you guys have any questions, any comments, anything? Thank you. Thank you. It was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for the word. Yes. And going back to um, Psalm 47. <clears throat> and it says, Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. The Lord Most High is terrible. Translated, that word terrible means great and powerful. Excuse me. He is a great king over all the earth. <clears throat> he shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Yes. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. And then at the end he puts Shelah. That's what got me that word right there. That word Shelah translated means think about what you just read. Amen. The Holy Ghost. Amen. So when he said, and I don't want to come over your Bible, so this no, is just no. grab me right now when you're reading this. Okay. He said, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Mm -hmm. He's just saying, now think about what you just read. Think about that. Mm -hmm. and, and anyways, I just wanted to say that because it, I mean, it just grabbed my spirit when you read that. And yeah, you're totally right. It's the time for us to to rise up and and spread the gospel like a trumpet. Yes, amen. This, this is the time 
to really share with people. And, and we already have the inheritance in the eternal life. But this is the time for us to bring the people who's, who doesn't know God. That's why they are full of anger and pain and fear. And uh, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, thank you. And uh, any other comment? Any other thing? No? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>